Hi everyone. We are still on the basement computer techniques. And we are on accounting. We are looking at accounting rate of return today as one of the methods under the traditional method of appraiser. The accounting rate of return is also known as the return on capital employed or return on investments. As the name suggests, accounting, accounting, accounting rate of return. It uses accounting information as revealed in a financial statement to measure the profit, to measure the profitability of a project. What do I mean by this? When evaluating how valuable a project is, under this method, we make use of the accounting profit. We make use of what of the accounting profit in order to evaluate whether a project is profitable or not. And one of the methods in which one of the formulas in which we use under the ARR is what to average annual profit or loss all over average investment. Everything multiplied, it is expressed in form of what percentage is in percentage term. So what is average annual profit? Average annual profit is a summation of all the profit you have made over a period of time, which under, under consideration, the profit you have made, the summation of the, the profit, now average the average of, of the of the profit you have made for that period, for the period under review. Why the average investment is what is cost plus current value. Divided by two, that is how to calculate our average investment. So we also have other forms of what other forms of other forms of men formulas for calculating the ARR. So let's look at the other formulas for calculating the ARR and the accounting rate of return. Under it, we have we know we have this already, which is average annual profit or loss over average investment. So other formulas we have under the ARR method are we have it to be okay. Others formula we have it to be. One ARR is equal to average profit, after tax, all over initial investment. Times one hundred percent. Another formula is estimate ARR is equal to estimated estimated total profit all over initial investment. Times one hundred percent. Three ARR is equal to estimated total profit over average. Investment So these are the other formulas that we have for computing accounting rate of return. 
average profit after tax over initial investment multiplied by 100% or average or estimated total profit over initial investment expressed in percentage term or estimated total profit over average investment expressed in what to in percentage term as well. Now, what are the decision rules? What are the decision rules? What are the decision rules? So, let's quickly look at the decision rules too. I haven't seen this formula. Let's now look at the decision rules in which we are going to. Because under any of the appraisal techniques, we have what decision rules. So the decision rule, decision rule. The decision rule. If ARR is greater than the company, the company's cost of capital. Is equal to what? Asset. Two. If ARR is less than the company's cost of capital, is equal to reject. Three, if ARR is equal to the company's cost of capital, is equal to what? Asset or reject. Depending on other qualitative factors. So these are the decision rules on the accounting rate of return as well. Because for every appraisal techniques, they have a decision rule in which there are decision rules in which we have to do what we have to follow. So under the accounting rate of return, the decision rules are what? One, if the ARR, accounting rate of return, is greater than the company cost of capital, we are going to do what? Accept the project. But in a case whereby the account rate of return is less than the company cost of capital, you will reject, you get the project. But in a scenario whereby the account rate of return is equal to the company cost of capital, you either accept or reject, depending on other qualitative factors. So those qualitative factors that we have discussed earlier, so you are going to put them into consideration for you to determine whether you are going to accept or reject the project. Now, as we say this, let's now look at one example to particularize what we have been talking about so far. Employee of 
twenty percent, and is now considering the following projects. Capital cost eight million, eight million less estimated life. This project. Estimated project inflow. Project cash inflow. Before depreciation. We have it in the S. One, two, three, four. So we have the cash flow, cash inflow. We have it in year one, two million. In year two, two point five. Year three, three point five million. Year four, two point five. The the capital asset will be. Depreciated by twenty five percent of its cost per annum and we have. No residual residual value. Required using estimated. Profit or loss of uh, estimated average investment. Assess whether the project is worthwhile. Okay. This is a question present to practicalize uh, the accounting rate of return. If it does, the company has a target return on capital employed of 
and is now considering the following projects. Capital cost of the assets is 8 million naira. Estimated life, 4 years. Estimated project cash inflow before depreciation. You have it in years. Years 1, 2, 3, 4. Cash inflow, we have 2 million, 2.5, 3.5, and 2 million, respectively, for each of the years. So the capital asset will be depreciated by 35% of its cost per annum and will have no residual value. Required using estimated average profits or loss all over estimated average investment on everything expressed in percentage assess whether the project is worthwhile. Okay, so having seen this question like this, we have been given the formula to use to assess whether the project is worthwhile. One by worthwhile whether we should accept the project or not. I've been at the back of our mind that we have already given us the decision rules to determine whether we should accept the project or not. Okay, so let's now assess whether we are going to do what embark on the project. So, because of the space constraints, I will have to So we have a question already, so let me just clean the question of the question so that we can have space to do what to compute. So the formula to use is average estimated. Average profit or loss all over estimated average investment times one hundred. Okay. Having said this, so we can see that the profit given to us is profit before the position. Though it was not explicitly stated that the profit given to us is what to profit before the position. But well, we are told that we are given the depreciation rates in this question. So therefore, the profit given to us in this question is profit before depreciation. And as the topic entails, you said we are, looking, we are using the accounting information, the accounting profit. So therefore, before we now arrive at the accounting profit, it means we have to nail off the depreciation value from this uh, cash inflow. By that, the starting point is to calculate our depreciation. So, workings, the starting point here is to do what? Compute our depreciation. So, solution. So, we have to compute our depreciation, computation of depreciation. So how do we compute our depreciation? Depreciation is computed as depreciation is this cost of the assets cost minus crown value if there's any divided by useful life useful life of the assets useful life of the assets in this case the cost of the asset is eight million. 8 million naira. Why there is what? In this question, there is no what? There is no square value, which is zero. So by that, divided by the useful life, what is the value of the asset? We are told it's four years. So 8 million divided by four, we are going to have two million. So therefore, the depreciation to be charged on a yearly basis is two million. I would say that let's now calculate our average estimated average profit. Let's now determine the profit every year. 
So we don't do that. This one is completion one, working one, these two. So computation of profit after depreciation. So let's be doing this form. So here we have it one, two, three, four. Our profit before depreciation. Profit before depreciation is for year one. Oh, you give us is two million. For year one, two million. For year two, two point five. For year three, three point five. For year four, two point five. These are our profit given to us in the question. So let's now remove our depreciation. Depreciation now. This we have computed here to be 2 million on a daily basis. 2 million. 2 million. 2 million. So profit after the decision now. Profit after the decision. So here we have nail. Here we are going to have it to be five hundred thousand. Here we are going to have it to be one point five million. And here we have it to be 500,000. Now, these are profits after the position. So from here now, we cannot calculate our, okay, let's do the last time what is, which is what estimated average investment. So where average investment is equal to cost plus square value all over two and our cost in this case is eight million now our square value is what zero divided by two which is what four million So we have gotten our average investment. Average investment in that case. So our average profit is summation of what? The profit, this plus this plus this plus this. So zero plus five hundred thousand plus one point five plus five hundred thousand. So when we sum this together, yes. 2 million 2.5 which is what 2.5 2.5 million all over divided by 4 4 so let's conclude that to see our average profit So by that we have six million six hundred and twenty five thousand. Now we have average, average profit and also average investment. Let's now apply our formula. We have it in this form now. So, so these are what is. Let's now apply our formula in order to get our ARR. So, 
ARR is equal to estimated average profit, which is what 625,000 out of our average investment, 4 million. So, that gives us 625,000 divided by 4 million. So we have it in percentage, so we multiply it by 100%. So we have it to be 15.625 percentage. Now, having said this, this is the, our accounting rate of return. So, before you make your decision, you have to consider the decision rule. And the decision rule says, states, stated that you should accept the project if the account rate of return is greater than the company cost of capital. By this, therefore, considering the account rate of return we have got in here, you can see is what we are given the cost, company cost of capital of the company cost of capital is what? 20%. So our decision, therefore, is what? The project should be, the project is not worthwhile. The project is not worthwhile. Because the ARR is less than the okay because the company because the ARR of fifteen point six two five percent is less than the company's Cost of capital of twenty percent. Yes, this is our decision. Because we are told that is the project worthwhile, and we are told that the company has a target. Return on investment on capital employed of what to 20%. And we can see now our computed ARR is less than the company cost of capital of 20%. So, therefore, the project is not worthwhile. So, they should reject the project. So, you can see that video is not worthwhile. So it is very, very easy for us to do or to determine that to make our decision at this at, at this point. Because we are going to do what to successfully comp compute our what our ARR and in, com and com in comparison with what will the company cost of capital. And alternatively, we can do this. We can look to do to arrive at this answer. Without passing through this long process, by doing what? By summing up the profit given to us in the first place, without removing the duplication of the first instance, sum up all the profit given to us, average it by four, and do what? Now remove the answer you now got, now you now get, now remove what? The the precision from it, so you are going to get your what to you are going to get our average profit. Let's look at it and see what I'm talking about. So the profit given to us initially is yeah. two million. Was two point five 
plus 3.5 plus 2.5 all over 4 now we will now compute this let's sum, let's sum it up that's what I'm going to have Sum it together, you're going to have 10 million five hundred thousand all over four. So 10 million five hundred thousand divided by four, divided by four. So we have we have it to be what two million. Two million six twenty-five thousand. Now, this is every problem that we have. Now, we have not taken care of the depreciation in this case, and the profit we want to use is what to profit after depreciation. So, therefore, in order to get our true average profit, we have to remove depreciation from this. So, it will now be what two million six twenty-five thousand. Minus two million. This two million is our depreciation. So therefore, we are going to have what six twenty five, six twenty five thousand. This is six twenty five thousand we got when we when we when we move the depreciation value. So this will now be about to average profit, in which our average investment still remains. So we now still do what six two five six two five thousand. Divided by the four million, we are still going to have so four million. So we still have the fifteen point six two five cents. So this is very this is a short method of of computing your AR and the account rate of return as well. So it is very simple. So anything we are doing on the financial management, we have to make a decision. So by this, we are able to do what to decide to see that the project is not worth what because the average accounting and the accounting rate of return is lower than the company cost of capital. By this, therefore, you have to do what you have to reject the project. At this junction, we have come to the end of the traditional. Appraisal technique because we have looked at the payback period and we have also look at the what are the account rate of return. So in subsequent video, we will be looking at the discounted cash flow method. Please, if you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel, kindly click on the subscribe button. Also, share this share this video with your loved ones. Give us comments, like the videos, subscribe. Put in the, in the comment section, put the comment there on how to do what to improve. And how we what I'll be glad to do what to receive your comment. Thank you and God bless. See you next time.